with Taika Engineering Kiss Soft Tech Support. Um, we're looking at a Kiss Design uh, new module in Kiss Soft. I think you're going to like it pretty well. Um, you can basically sketch out a complete system. You're going to get <clears throat> the uh, the 3D geometry with it right here. You can look at it. You've got kinematics, input outputs, and you have some system data. And this would be similar to like your um, user interface and kiss this. And we got some basic results. You've got root flank, root and flank safety, uh, integral temperature, scuffing, static safety. All this stuff comes right in um, on this basic calculation on the bottom of this page. And you've got a, a group here. Got an element, element tree right here. Gear contacts. This is kind of the layout. You've got a control panel. <clears throat> this is kind of the layout of the uh, of the new Kiss design um, interface. So we have element boxes, shafts. This would be a shaft calculation. Here's just a shaft. So this is a shaft. This is the shaft calculation. If I double click that, it brings me right into the shaft calculation. I'm going to hit this back arrow right here to system. Um, and if it says if I want to lock this, yeah, I want to lock it so that nothing changes in here since I made that adjustment in there. So still have module specific settings. Um, maybe we'll get into some of that a little bit. Name of the elements. You can define right here if it's going to be an auto. Um, <clears throat> the shaft is an auto, right? Default dimensions, so this is if you have width and height factors based on your power input. <clears throat> Contact analysis, you can turn this on, deactivate it, that kind of stuff. All right. So this is a basic overall what the, uh, the KISS design module kind of looks like right here. And, and what we would normally do is we'd, we'd start out, we'd open up our KISS soft, right? And here we have this KISS design, it's a system module. You double click this it opens up this interface like we just talked about um, I can click in here at any one of these double click I should say at any one of these inner inner sections on the grid so if I double click right here it inserts a shaft calculation and a shaft all right it says calc 1 and it says shaft calc 1 because that's what on the naming of the elements it's a shaft calculation and auto increases by one. All right. So shaft calc one and shaft one. So it's the same for the shaft. Shaft and auto increase one. All right. I can drag this. If I double click that again, I can drag this. I want to double click and hold that. I want to make that longer. If I don't want it there, I can, just hit, I can click on it and hit delete. So if I double click, it goes on. I can drag it out however far I want. I click it, and it goes to there. And then I can uh, hit escape, or I can double click. And if I hit escape, now this blue line is a dash line, is the center line of the shaft. Um, I'm just going to put it right in the center of the shaft. And now the shaft has a center line. Okay. It's pretty easy to add our elements. I can highlight the shaft like so and I can put a gear on it and it plops the gear on the end. I can anywhere you see that little square if you can see where it shows up around my cursor if I don't want the gear right there I'm going to delete that but I can where that little square shows up I can add an element so if I click right there I can right click and it pulls up that save elements box and I can do a gear and it puts it there. And if I right click right here, I want a, a coupling. It puts a coupling right there. If I want these to be a little bit bigger, right, <clears throat> maybe right here I want to put in a bearing. So I right click, make sure I got that little box. I go down to bearing and put a roller bearing in. And then let's say I want to put a, a roller bearing right here. Right click. And I can put a roller bearing in. All right. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I don't really need this back here. This is kind of longer than I needed in my shaft. I'm going to have power coming in. It's a, it's a and you know it's a uh, cantilevered shaft. 
So I can click on this and hit delete and it drops that down and now my shaft is here. <clears throat> so now I've got a shaft, I've got a gear, I got a couple of bearings, I got a coupling. It's all right here in my tree. If I go to my 3D viewer, I got it my my gear is here and I got a coupling out here and my two bearings. Yeah, I'm going to do a simple, I can click on these things up here, like I can construct a vertical, I can do move elements, zoom in, zoom out. Um, this one here is simplified symbols. If I click on that, it changes my symbols. This shows my details, power flow. This is resulting power flow <clears throat> and the direction of rotation. All right. Those are just some of these things. I can turn that grid on and off too. I have a shaft. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click here right above it. And I'm going to put a second shaft in. And it's simple to double click. And then I click on those two ends that I want. And then if I want to finish that, I either hit escape or I double click. And then it's going to ask, that's this blue dot, dash line is the center line of the shaft. Of course, you want it in the center of the shaft. I click there. Now you can see that center comes through the shaft. Here on this point, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add another gear. It's right in line with my other gear. It doesn't have to be right in line. I'm just making it in line. And then right, right here, I'm going to put a bearing. Right click, bearing. Right click, bearing, right click, coupling. All right. So now I got two gears driven. Um, one drives the other one. And I got input and output. So I'm going to go here. And I can simply rename this to input, input shaft. Output underscore shaft. Okay. And then this coupling, I can rename to input right there. And this coupling, I can either rename it to output. All right. So now I'm going to, I got to do my kinematics because I don't have that stuff yet. Um, <clears throat> I need to add boundary conditions. So I'm going to go highlight this input and I'm going to put a boundary condition on it. And this boundary one. And I'm going to change this name to input. And boundary two. Oops. I just have to highlight the element and go to power flow, my boundary condition. And this is going to be output. All right. Now the other thing that we do is we're going to highlight this gear and we're going to connect it to this gear. And it depends on which way you draw it. So if I want this first gear on this lower shaft driving, I'm going to just right click and grab that. Sorry, left click and drag this up. See how it says meshing? And it meshes with that gear. And now on my gear contacts, right down here, I've got a gear pair contact, all right? Kinematically, I'm looking at my input and my output. And I want to decide define torque and speed for my input and torque and speed for my output. Actually, we can do none right there. So let's say this is 300 foot-pounds. And let's say that the speed is 3,200. RPM, all right? Input, output, okay? Now I've got, <clears throat> it's a one-to-one, -one. obviously I haven't changed anything with a gear pair, but I've got uh, a complete ratio here. I've got system data, 20,000 hours. And if I look at my 3D viewer, Oh, look at that. My shafts are now lined up while well, they're next to each other. They're not lined up, but they are definitely next to each other. So what I might do, and there's multiple ways of doing it, is I can double-click right here. 
and I'll get my cylindrical gear pair information kind of set up. I can double click in the gear contacts and when I do that it's going to open up my KISS off calculation and all my information is in here now how I'm calculating all that. Um, maybe I do a rough sizing maybe I want this to be a, num a nominal transmission of 3.15 um, maybe I need a 12 degree helix and then I'm going to run this and now I have a rough calculation remember this is based on everything oops everything in the so it's using this material case hardening steel soil bath um, and you know I can I can look at my my ratios 3.18 I think I said 3.15 Plus or minus five percent. Um, so let me grab this one. Twelve thirty-eight. Here's an even better one. Uh, Thirteen forty-one. So I accept this. Close that window. Everything is populated in here. I can calculate it. Doesn't like my specific sliding, so maybe I fix that right here. Calculate it again. Jeez, maybe I should have grabbed a different one. Let's see. You just click on that since I didn't lose any of that data. Maybe you want to get rid of the specific sliding stuff. We'll go down here where it's low. Here's a, here's a pretty balanced set. The specific sliding is this right here in the, in the graph. So it's a 1444. We said 3.15. That was not too bad. We'll accept that one. <clears throat> and now if I go to my graph, everything is in here, just like normal. Here's my specific sliding. Okay, it looks good. Uh, now when I close this, it's going to ask, do I want to sub mount? I want to lock that, so yes. All right. Now I'm going to run this again. And I get my system information right here, my lowest root safety, my lowest flank safety. Well, that should update. that again there there updated 2.251 uh, if I go to my 3d viewer now I've got um, gears where I think they need to be right let's move this a little bit rotate and look at it uh, in this calculation pair <coughs> I want the shaft output we can then consider The location of of the uh, of the uh, shaft, so we can adjust that. Um, typically, we would, we would say that we want this shaft right here to be zero, right? This would be one. This would be one. Let me update that. This is an in inches, must be. Um, so this looks good. Um, I'll put shaft two. We're going to de deconnect this one right here. And we want to keep that connected. Okay. So cylinder one and two. Right here. I'm highlighting this gear pair calc over here in the bottom left. And what I'm looking at is the the, uh, the polar angle. And if I said that needed to be 45 degrees, and I plug 45 degrees in here, that moves the shaft up 45 degrees. Okay. And you can do that for all your shafts. We got to we got to deselect. Um, You just gotta select that gear pair. This updates, and here's your polar angle. Okay. All right. And then this is gonna give you the offset right here. If you wanted an offset, and you got the center distance, and that should come right from the calculation. So. All right. Now I can see these shafts don't look right because they should be bigger. 
what we're going to do quickly is we're going to grab the shaft calculation right here input shaft double click on it and then we're going to go in and we're going to make a few um, we'll view movable forces and supports just like kiss soft now and you know this is they size this bearing for whatever it was we move that one back this one comes in um, this is our coupling comes out and that's our gear so we just move this stuff around here to make it fit a little bit better maybe the shaft gets I don't know why we have that many elements in here but we can certainly adjust this if we needed to so this is uh, Anyways, you, you guys understand how this works. <clears throat> so, so here's my shaft. I click out of here. I say yes. I'm gonna lock it, and then I, I want to refresh. Okay, so I refresh that. You can see that it moved the bearings out. And then my big shaft. I double click out here, and I probably gotta go to view, turn my movable forces on, and now I can just drag this, these things around. Use my output connector. Uh, in fact, I could I'll probably make this a single cylinder. Jump this up a little bit. Now, when I click on here, I can. I like my stuff down here. I can size it right here. All right. I can do the same thing over with this one. I can size it maybe 2.8 inches a bit much maybe 1.5 is fine then we size these I'm probably not going to have a double supported here I'm probably just have this on this end and on this end I probably just have adjusted on the right side okay now I can run this who knows how long they're going to last does it matter not really I look at my results 1700 hours looks like when I come in here I'm going to say yes and now I've got uh, an updated 3d model and my sketch is still the same so this is a real rough entry on KISS design um, we do a lot of the same things but we can actually visualize and see our connections and see how things are working kinematically I know that I have an input and an output uh, my system data, I can add and subtract these. I can add however many I want. I can define if it's going to be a, uh, a shaft or let's say it's going to be a, a, a bearing or a gear. So if it's a gearing, I, I can do lubricant and I can make it active. Any of these I don't want active, I can turn off. I can change this to 2,500 hours. And now when I run this again, all of my safeties change a little bit based on the actual design time. You can see it update real time. So we can put in all kinds of things here. Worms and developing. You put your own stuff in here, but then you can turn on and off out of these. Kinematically, 3D viewer, we can see how, how things are rolling. Um, you've got the, the rotational direction, and then you've got uh, the, the power flow. So you, you have torque back on here. Um, does it run? I think we can do a video. Can we turn this right here? Okay, there it's running. Good animation. Anyways, so quick, a quick uh, view of Kiss design. We can do pretty complex stuff on here. You, there's still going to be some things for Kiss Sys to to be around for a number of years, but Kiss design is kind of the direction. It's a plug and play. We can set up our systems like like so. And, uh, you know, you can update things real time and run them. Uh, I think it's pretty powerful. Uh, you'll probably like it. Just, uh, you know, I learned on KISS SIS and learning KISS Design. KISS Design isn't too bad. So, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it.